Welcome to Twin Lakes Worship Center. Today, I'm going to be preaching on a subject, being the, the 4th of July weekend, Are You Free? You see, sadly, a lot of people believe just because we live in America, just because we're born citizens of a free country with democracy, that that means we're free. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that you have got to a point to enjoy the freedom of Christ. So I want you to stay tuned or you're gonna be confused about what I'm talking about. Stay tuned and find out, are you truly free? God bless you, stay with us. And if you have your Bibles, be turning to the book of John in chapter number eight. The book of John in chapter number eight. And I'm gonna say, I'm so proud of y'all this morning. Fourth of July weekend, pretty good crowd, down a little bit, but they'll answer for that, amen? <laughs> About the time they fire up their grill, it's going to rain. <laughs> but I am so proud of y'all for being here and being in the Lord's house. Today, being that it is the Fourth of July weekend, being it is the weekend that probably more than ever before we think about the fact that we do live in a nation of democracy, that we do live in a country that is uh, set apart because of its wonderful freedom, I want to ask you today, are you really free? Are you truly, truly free? And if you think you are, I might would ask the second question, why do you think so? Because I want to propose a thought this morning. If you believe that you're free because you're an American, you're wrong. Now I want you to listen closely from here forward or some you, you're going to get confused and leave here saying I said something I didn't say. Perhaps if you are a Christian, you think you're free. You might be wrong there as well. Now I got you thinking, don't I? Look with me in John chapter 8, beginning in verse number 30. Now I want you to listen closely to what's said this morning. This ain't going to be one of them entertaining sermons. I ain't got a lot of good stories on Mike or Gary or jokes or nothing, but I assure you it's an important sermon. Listen to what's said closely. It says, as he spoke these words, and it's talking about Jesus, many believed on him. So what does that mean? As he spoke, a lot of people got saved. Everybody agree? Okay. Verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him. Now he's talking to those people that just got saved. Okay. Okay. Listen to what he says. He says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So it stands to reason that just because they got saved, they didn't know or experience freedom yet. Right? He said because the Bible was clear. He was talking to the ones that just believed on him. It didn't say believed in him. They believed on him. Big difference in believing in God and believing on God. Big difference. So they just got saved. And he said, now, if you want freedom, here's what you got to do. I want to go on and read the next couple of verses because I think it will help. This makes sense to you. Look at verse 33. They answered him, we are Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? You see, they was having a little bit of trouble with what Jesus just told them. They said, he said, you've believed on me. Now, if you'll do this, this, and this, you shall be free. And they said, well, wait a minute, Jesus. We're Jews born from the seed of Abraham. 
We've never been in bondage to any man. What are you talking about free? You see, if I propose this morning to you, just because you're an American, you're not free. That would be hard for some people to understand. What are you talking about? I'm not free. I live in a free country. I'm I'm in a free nation. There's some here today that I would say to them, just because you got saved, you're not free. You'd say, well, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm, I'm a child of God. And the truth shall set you free. Did you hear what Jesus just told them? He said to those that had just believed on him, listen to it again, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You see, it is absolutely possible for you to be a born-again Christian and not experiencing the freedom of Christ. And he says the freedom comes through the truth. And the truth comes through, what did he say? Number one, you've got to believe on him, not in him. You've got to be saved. But then he said you've got to also continue in my word to become my disciples. He said here's what you've got to do. You've got to be saved. You got to continue in my word to be disciples, and the result is the truth will be made known to you. You see, there are some people that experience and receive the saving grace of God, and thank God it's a free gift. Thank God it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But if you want to experience the full freedom of being a child of God, let me tell you what you got to do you got to be serious about your salvation. You've got to continue in his word. You've got to continue in his word to become a disciple, which means to simply be under the discipline of. You say, you can't go on and keep living like the world and expect all the benefits of God to come into your lap. He said, you've got to continue in my word in order to become a disciple. And when you become a disciple, then I will reveal the truth to you. And when you have the truth in your life, then you are free indeed. So here's my whole point. Are you one of those Christian Americans that beats on your chest about freedom and quite honestly... Don't have any idea what you're talking about. Are you one of those Christians that talks about and and agree with the preaching of being free in Christ, but yet you have not done what Jesus himself said you must do in order to experience that freedom? These people said, Lord, we, we don't understand what you're talking about. We're born of Abraham. We've never been in bondage. We're we're on the right side of the track, so everything's good. What are you talking about, be free? I don't need freedom. I'm already free. Well, thankfully, Jesus knew they didn't have any idea what he was talking about. Just like I assume a large majority of professing Christians today don't have any idea what I'm talking about. And Jesus went on to explain the type of freedom that he was talking about. You see, the first thing he wanted them to know was that when you follow out your salvation through continuing in the word, being a disciple of Christ, having the truth revealed to you, it will set you free from the bondage of sin. Look what is said in verse number 34. Jesus answered them. This is when they asked, what are you talking about being free? Jesus answered them, verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. He said, you're talking about being free. You're so wrapped up in the bondage of sin that you wouldn't know freedom if it rode by on a horse. 35. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. You see, there's a whole lot of people today that are professing to be Christians, but they have never yet experienced the freedom from the bondage of sin. Freedom from the bondage of sin. Do you realize that when you become a child of God, 
Freedom is made available. In other words, you no longer have to live in a life or in the premise of that you don't have the power not to sin. You see, before Christ, before you were saved, you had no power or authority over your life or what happens whatsoever. But when you become a child of God, what you've done is you have transferred your rights into the hands of God. And now the power is made available that you can live without sin in your life. You don't have to live in that sin. You don't have to have sin having control of your life. You have been set free by the Son of God. You don't have to experience what you used to experience. You don't have to go through what you used to go through. Why? Because as a child of God, you have been set free from the bondage of sin. It's all on him. It's by his power, his authority, that you will be set free from the bondage of sin. And yet, the world is full of Christians beating on their chest about free indeed, free in Christ, free in America. Beating on their chest about the word of God and and freedom of the word of God and preaching uh, the Ten Commandments in schools and, and on and on and on. And they've not figured out the elementary truth that when you get saved, you have been set free from the bondage of sin. You don't have to live in sin anymore. Why? Because of Jesus. And when you figure that out and you experience that freedom, when you experience that liberty that I don't have to dwell among sin anymore, that through the power of Jesus Christ I can defeat sin, that's why Paul said I can do all things through Christ because he figured it out. It's all about him. It ain't about me. It ain't about what I can do, can't do, what I can experience, can't experience. It's about what God can do. And when you get saved, you have been set free from the bondage of sin. So I ask you, are you free? Or are you one of the many Christians that truly know and believe in their heart that they've put their faith and trust in Jesus, but you're still living a servant to sin? You don't have to. When Jesus saved you, he broke the chains. When Jesus saved you, he threw away the keys. You don't have to be in bondage anymore. So Jesus was trying to teach these new Christians a very fundamental truth. He said, when you get saved, continue in me. Because there's truths that you need to learn. There's truths that you need to experience. And that is the freedom from the bondage of sin. But then he went on and he said, not only will you be set free from the bondage of sin... But he also said you'll be set free from the blemishes of birth. You'll be set free from the blemishes of birth. Look in verse number 36, 37, I'm sorry. Listen to what he says now. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me. Because my word hath no place in you. I speak. That which I have seen with my father. And you do that which you have seen with your father. He said, listen. If you want to experience freedom. When you come to know me, realize not only are you set free from the bondage of sin. But you've also been set free from the blemishes of birth. You see, he said, you're acting like the world. You're living like the world. You're repeating what you've seen your father do. You're repeating what you've seen this world do. You're handling things the way you've seen others do. Jesus said, as for me, I'm doing the same thing. I'm handling it the way I've seen my father. I'm speaking the way I've heard my father speak. 
I'm dealing with the issues the way I've seen my father deal with the issues. And he said, now because you are in me, you can quit living and acting like a heathen. You can quit having the traits of your fathers of the world. You see, I've shared with you, and I truly believe this, I'm one of the luckiest people on the face of the earth. I truly am. I'm, I'm not joking, no punchline. When it comes to parents, I don't know anybody that has set a better example than my mom and dad. Yes, he's got crazy in his old age, but, but, <laughs> but the example's been given. And I realize that a vast majority of people in this world have not had that benefit. A lot have, but a lot haven't. Perhaps you're one of those people. I got good news for you. When you get saved, you've been set free from the blemishes of birth. You've been set free. You don't have to be like that. You don't have to be like what you see in the world. You don't have to be like what's been passed down from you. I have talked to people and I said, Brother Jeremy, I've got all these problems and this is going on and that's going on and my life's falling apart and it's all because of these things that's happened in my life. And I agree, they probably were. But here's a truth you need to know. When you find Jesus, you've been set free from those blemishes. You see, that ain't your daddy no more. That's your daddy now. And through Christ, we have been adopted by blood into the family of God. And he said, you've been set free from that. You see, it don't matter where you came from. It don't matter what kind of childhood you've had. It don't matter what you've done or what's been done to you. It don't matter what problems have come in your life, whether they was of your own doings or somebody else's doings. When you find Jesus, you get set free from all that garbage. Because the blemishes of this world, of birth, of man, no longer apply. They no longer apply. You've been set free from what your mortal body is and is capable of. You look back through the scripture, and you can find an orphan that was just thrown into the bulrushes of the ocean side, a murderer. You can find those that have walked away from family. You can find all manner of stories of people that, that, that have done all kinds of evil, wicked things. But when God came into their life, the blemishes of that man, the old man, I love this. The old you, who you really were, is dead. And the new man is risen. What freedom. What freedom. I'm telling you, it, it, without that truth, can you imagine where Mo would be? Without the truth that, that, that the old man is dead and the new man has risen and who you were born into this world don't matter because now you came from being a nothing to a somebody. Now you may have been the father of a drunk or an evil or a mean person, but now you are joint heirs to the throne of God through Jesus Christ. What freedom. Wow. So I ask you, again, are you free? Or are you just simply saved and not experiencing the true freedoms of being a Christian? Unfortunately, a lot of people are. A lot of people are. Jesus said when these people ask him, Lord, what do you mean be free? He said, you can be freed from the bondage of sin. You don't have to serve sin no more. Sin has no place or right in your life because of Jesus. He said, you can be made free from the blemishes of birth. 
It don't matter what you are, was, or could be, or has been. What matters is what you are now. But then he says to them, lastly, you can also be free from the boundaries of death. Look what he says in verse 48. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan. That was kind of a slap in the face. That was not, they were being sarcastic. And hast a devil. In other words, they're saying to Jesus, I, I'm not so sure about you with all this. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. You see, through Jesus, you are set free to the boundaries of death. You know, death is one of those things that, that we don't really like to talk about, do we? I mean, you think about it. I mean, we come up with all kinds of way. We, we even try to disguise what it is. Well, we've lost them. They passed. They've gone on. Because we don't like to say they're dead. We don't like death. And because of that, if you don't understand the freedom that Jesus brings, death is going to have a whole different perspective for you in your life. You see, when you understand the freedom that Jesus, he, he sets you free from the boundaries of death. When you understand that, death takes on a whole new meaning. Now, I'm not saying people, any Christian is not at a point where, where they worry about how they're going to die or they don't want to suffer. That's just common sense. Anybody would do that. But let me tell you, it changes your perspective. Because now death has with it no fear. Because you understand through him, he has taken the boundaries of death away. And now death is one of those things that we understand to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord for a Christian. So it takes away that fear of the unknown. It takes away its finality that when death comes, that's the end and, and, and there's nothing else going on. We know that because of death, there, because of Jesus, when death comes, life goes on. He said, for those who have heard my sayings and, and accept and take those sayings, he shall never see death. You see, death the way most people think of it does not exist. You want me to blow your mind? You ready? Here we go. You are going to live forever. The question is where? You're going to live forever. The question is where? Through Jesus, we've been set free to that finality. That we're going to live forever. And that he has gone and prepared a place just for me. I believe it's right next to a steakhouse. <laughs> I truly do. I truly do. It was one of them long dessert buffets. <laughs> because of him, we've been set free from the boundaries of death. And death no longer has its fierceness. I love the little story about the daddy and his little girl driving down the road and it was a cool spring day and they had the windows down in the old truck and all of a sudden the little girl just started screaming at the top of her lungs and the dad looked over and a big old bumblebee had come in the window and landed on her leg. She was extremely allergic, knew that even a sting from it could mean death. Without any thought, without any hesitation, the dad reached over and he grabbed that bumblebee in his hand. And as the bee stung him in the hand, he 
slowly opened the, his hand and got the bee out. Knowing that that stinger was buried in his hand, he showed his little girl, he can't hurt you no more. I took the sting for you. And he let the little bee just fly around, crawl around in the car. And the little girl finally, because her daddy told her it was okay, calmed down. Let me tell you a better story than that. When Jesus made it to the top of a hill called Calvary. They laid a cross down on the ground. And the guards prepared for a fight were amazed as Jesus willingly laid down upon that cross and he said, no man taketh my life. I give it freely. And they nailed him to the cross and some hours later he cried out, it is finished. And they took him off the cross and they took him to a tomb. They placed him in the tomb and they put a rock in front of it and they sealed the rock. And I'm sure Satan giggled as he thought, you were right, buddy, it's finished. But then three days later, all of a sudden, the stone got rolled away. And Jesus come walking out of that tomb, holding the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And he said, oh, death. Where is thy victory? O oh, grave, where is thy sting? And he said, for those who will keep my sayings, he shall never die. Because he took the sting for us. You see, I'm afraid that there are a lot of people just like this group Jesus was talking about. They had believed on him, but they had yet to adopt the truth. And it's in the truth that you find the freedom. The freedom that you don't have to accept sin in your life anymore. You've been set free from the bondage of sin. You don't have to accept who you are and what's been done to you and what you're capable or not capable or what I've done or hadn't done. Jesus said, I'll set you free from the blemishes of birth. He said, you don't have to worry about the boundaries of death anymore. Because for the Christian, death, it changes. You want to know what death is to me? I'll tell you, it's retirement. That's the way I view it. Lord knows I ain't going to get to retire here. <laughs> Death changes everything. For those who have found the truth. Because the truth sets you free. So I ask all of you proud Americans today. Are you really free? Because there is but one way to be free indeed. And that's through Jesus. Well, I hope the message today spoke to your heart. And I hope that you can answer the question that I truly am free and free indeed. If not, how important it is that we struggle to be disciples of Christ so that we can find the truth which leads to freedom, and then experience and enjoy all the freedoms that come with it. I hope this has spoke to your heart and helped you. And as always, I'd love to invite you to come worship with us at Twin Lakes Worship Center. Our worship times are at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. We'd love to have you. Come see us. God bless you, and you have a great, great week.